Well, the drought across the U.S. is the worst in 50 years, and it is affecting many countries in Africa and Asia who import grain such as corn, wheat, and soybeans. The dependency by African nations on foreign-grown produce is a concern to many African food experts who say Africa should be more self-sufficient in growing its own food staples. I recently discussed Africa's dependency on food imports with Faustin Wabwire, Senior Foreign Assistance Policy Analyst for the Bread for the World Institute, here in Washington. One thing is that the United States is the world's largest exporter of the main um, grains, including corn and soybeans. So a lot of countries that are heavily dependent on these imports are likely to experience the effects of the rising prices as a result of the drought in the United States, which has drastically reduced the corn yield. Um, a number of reports indicate that Mali, um, Niger, Ivory Coast, for example, are already grappling with the idea that um, governments need to remove taxes on all food imports just because they're very heavily dependent. And they, without doing that, the people are just not be able to cope with the rising food prices. Has the assumption always been that Africa produces most of its own corn, at least? Because most countries, a lot of countries, that is a staple. As a matter of fact, um, most of these countries cannot produce enough to feed the population. And part of it is because there's not been enough investment in agricultural research or extension. And so productivity has been falling over time. But given the conditions right now with climate change and weather-related issues that are lowering the productivity even more, then countries are forced to import even more. Just to clarify, we're not talking about food aid. This is actually countries paying for imports. Right. And I, a number of times I've engaged in discussions with um, government officials, for instance, and it was surprising for me to hear them say that sometimes they find that a cheaper option as opposed to investing in growing food locally, which obviously at the end of the day is not sustainable, but I think when you haven't laid down a, a plan or a platform on which to base your agricultural system on, and you're faced with a crisis where prices of food are going out the roof, then you're forced to import simply because you cannot begin to lay, for example, irrigation plans right away and produce food for the people. But that's why I think that it's very important to think long term, even as we come up with short term measures to address the crisis. Now, is part of the problem to do more with the way food is distributed on the continent. Is there maybe productivity of corn or wheat, but it's a question of how do you get it to various markets? That's a big issue, and I think um, even without thinking of Africa particularly, when you think about the global food system, I think the issue of distribution has a lot to do with the current effects of the high uh, food prices. But particularly in Africa, um, issues of distribution, um, infrastructure particularly, plays a very big role. Um, when we're talking about the drought in Somalia last year, for instance, a, a number of countries had sufficient stock of food, but it could just not move from where it was grown to where it was needed because of poor infrastructure. The other issue is a number of reports now indicate that the amount of food that's wasted in the areas that it's grown amounts between 40 to 70% of the amount of food produced. So a lot of infrastructural issues are um, part of the story. When it comes down to the basics, what do you think is maybe a more sustainable and a better option for a lot of the communities on the continent? In the past, small-scale farming had always worked in terms of at least feeding the immediate family and the larger community. You know, actually, smallholder producers are the people that feed the continent, are people that feed the world, basically. But unfortunately, over the years, and I think between the eight, from the 80s onwards, funding towards um, initiatives that were carried out by smallholder farming fell dramatically. And this is no surprise, therefore, that today we are more dependent on food that's coming from faraway continents. When our actual um, local producers are still there, they just don't have the necessary um, resources to produce food for the continent. Um, when you think of over 80% of the people that produce food on the African continent being 
um, smallholder farmers. I think that in itself speaks a lot. If they were able to have access to basic irrigation systems even, the infrastructure that we just talked about, uh, make the cost of inputs such as seeds and fertilizers more available to them, provide extension services. These are things that have carried the continent and fed um, the continent for years. But with the fall in um, these kinds of investments, then these are the kind of effects that we are um, experiencing from that. How do you see the continent navigating out of this current drought situation that the U.S. is undergoing? In 2008, when the same prices of food went up, a lot of countries experienced riots. And that's just how people respond, because most poor families do not have that discretionary spending in their budgets. So it's unfortunate that uh, food prices, you know, are directly linked to instability, not just within countries, but could be regional and even global. What I think that governments ought to do right now is um, try to find ways of removing barriers or uh, for trade, but also um, going to measures, for example, removing taxes on inputs, especially on food, like countries like Mali and Nigeria have already done. Faustin Wabwire, the Senior Foreign Assistant Policy Analyst for Bread for the World Institute. She also added that the international community should keep its commitment to help African countries develop their agriculture.